Hello, I'm Shandon Sarkar, and this is AP Computer Science Principles. If you need to reach me, my email address, csarkar at stanfordct.gov, is the best way. Before we talk about the principles course tonight, I wanted to take a moment to show you another resource that's going to be particularly useful for both parents and students who are interested in computer science at West Hill. That's this westhillcs.com site. And this site was put together this summer, and it's designed to get you introduced to our brand new Computer Science Academy at West Hill that launched on January 1st of 2020. Here you can see some introductory videos introducing the Academy, and down here are individual sheets that describe each of the courses offered at our Academy. Tonight we're going to be talking about AP Computer Science Principles, but I also want to call your attention to some information in the sidebar here that might be useful as well. Here's information on how to calculate grades for a particular course, what prerequisites are required, etc. There's lots of good information here about the Academy in general. Let's have a brief look at the page for Mobile CSP, which is, AP, which is uh, West Hill's version of AP Computer Science Principles. Here you can see some students talking about the course. The course is unique in several respects. The first is that whereas most AP classes uh, offered by the College Board have a fixed curriculum, in, mobile, in uh, AP Computer Science Principles, the College Board has decided to allow the schools to offer a variety of curriculum, letting them choose which one to use to teach the material. Here at West Hill, we have chosen the Mobile CSP platform, which teaches computing to students with no previous experience using an iPhone and a computer and a block-based language called MIT App Inventor, which as its name implies was provided by MIT. We feel that providing these apps to the students is a fun and engaging way to introduce programming concepts to students that have never previously had any. In this respect, <clears throat> the AP moniker on APCSP can be a little misleading. First of all, in terms of the academic challenge provided by this course, even though quite a lot of material is taught, I would say in my own personal opinion that the amount of academic rigor or stress put on the student is probably a little bit less than the other AP courses offered at the school. Likewise, the exam that takes place in the month of May is probably a little bit less challenging than most of the other AP exams. Having said that, the course is fantastic for several reasons, most of, important of which is that unlike other AP classes, there is no previous experience required in the field. This is particularly helpful if your son or daughter does not have uh, a lot of programming experience and wants to get exposed to the field in an engaging way that is not overly uh, aggressive or intimidating, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Uh, if this was a non-COVID year, I would tell you that there is very little homework in the course and there are only two major exams, which are the midterm and the final. This year, there's not going to be a midterm or final either because of our current COVID status. And so there will be a few quizzes to go along to keep everybody on track, but overall the workload is built so that most of the work can be completed in class. And that's really quite different from most of the other AP classes at the school. So getting back to our page here on AP Computer Science Principles, you'll see that there are lots of videos here about students talking about how the course works. There are brochures here and some statistics about how popular the course is compared to other AP classes that are offered. And I want to call your attention to one other thing that makes this course unique, and that is the fact that all the materials are provided on this online textbook here. And I should mention that this online textbook was created long before the pandemic hit the world. And the, and the developers of this course had decided that they wanted to make every single lecture available on video. For example, if I just move over to one of these units here, we happen to be right now finishing up unit two. And if I click on that, and you can see here, uh, there's going to be some vocabulary. And then if we go over to one of these programming tutorials, the first project that the students do is they code an app where there's a, a couple of buttons here, one with Martin Luther King 
and one with Malcolm X, and they can press the buttons and play the speeches and things like that. And these videos basically provide a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build the app. And then students are asked to make some extensions by using their brain power to try and extend what they have learned from those videos. It's worked quite well. I've taught this course now for, oh, this is probably my fifth or sixth year. And it's one of my favorite courses to teach. I actually believe that this course has probably changed the lives of more of my students than any other course I teach at West Hill. I realize that's quite a bold claim, but I think I have the statistics to back me up. The reason why I say that is I have lots and lots of students who take this course with no previous experience. And then by the time they're done, they say, hey, you know what? This is really interesting to me. Maybe I wanna major in computer science, or if not, maybe I wanna just minor in it. Perhaps I just wanna take one or two other computer science classes just to see if this, what, if this is really gonna be right for me. So by the time this year is over, your son or daughter will probably make a decision as to whether they enjoyed the content and want to continue in their computer science career. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to mark you, uh, I'm going to point you again to this westhillcs.com resource. And I'm going to mention to you that there are two courses that are likely to be good follow-ups in case your son or daughter wants to continue in their pursuit of computer science. This is the course they're taking right now, AP Computer Science Principles. And two good follow-ups are Honors Cybersecurity, which is right here, and also the much more academically challenging AP Computer Science A. If you're not sure which of these two courses to take next, I would encourage you to click on these course pages and look at the videos and see what the courses are about. And also you are always welcome to email me or your son or daughter is welcome to come see me uh, after school. And I'm more than happy to sit down with them and explain to them the similarities and differences of the two courses. Once again, you're welcome to send me an email to try and reach me at any time. And otherwise, I will only be in touch with you if there's an issue with your son or daughter. But right now, I would have to say with the first quarter rapidly getting past the halfway point, uh, despite all the challenges of having this hybrid environment, I would say the course is going reasonably well. The one concern that I have that I will leave you with is that on some occasions, some of the students are not watching the video lectures at home on the days that they have off. For that reason, I have to institute a couple of pop quizzes to make sure that everyone's paying attention. But aside from that, I would say that the environment is surprisingly productive given our situation. So with that, let me say goodbye. And I wish you uh, a pleasant journey this year to your son or daughter in this course, as well as through all their other courses at West Hill. And if you need to reach me, please don't uh, think twice about sending me an email. Thank you very much. And I look forward to meeting you in person sometime.